Stampers, Kelly Atchison at a stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. I think that I have a couple winners here for the One Stamp at a Time blog hop featuring a fall Halloween theme. I love Halloween. I love to decorate my house for Halloween. And I actually wear a costume when I hand out treats, so I get to participate in Trick or Treat too. This is the cutest little project here. It's got a battery operated votive candle in it that you just turn on and it flickers. It's really hard to demonstrate this during the day because of course it needs to be in a little darker area to see that candle illuminate through the cat punch here. But I'm gonna show you how to make this. and You can make a luminary candle holder like this in any theme that you'd like. And then I've got my matching card here. I do have a link on my blog showing the watercolor wash background technique, so make sure you check that out. Super fun, can't wait to send this out. Using our brand new black rhinestones that are in the holiday mini catalog and also the spooky cat bundle which includes the stamp set and the cat punch. I've shown a lot of projects using this bundle on my blog this fall, so make sure you go check those out at www.estampabove.com. Let's get started and I'll show you how to make this box. I'm gonna bring in my stamp and trimmer and then I've got a piece of lemon lime twist cardstock that is five and a half by 10 and three eighths. We're gonna score on the short side first at one and a half inches. And then we're gonna turn it to the long side and score at two and a half. seven and a half and ten now I'm going to come in and do some stamping before I go any further I've got my Memento black ink pad and then I'm using the little cat face out of the Spooky Cat stamp set. And I'm just going to stamp that all over my box. I've got a baby wipe at the ready in case I dip my block in the ink too because that, you know, if you rock that at all, you'll get edges all over the place and that just makes me crazy. Not that I needed any help with the crazy part. Need one more down there. All right, let's see where we're at. We're gonna punch out our cat from our luminary. And what I did here is I'm gonna score, or I'm sorry, I'm gonna fold on this edge and burnish that. And then leaving that folded edge under there, I'm going to bring my cat punch in and make sure that it's in between one of these panels. I'm just going to push it all the way up, center it, and punch. Now that is going to punch out a little bit on the bottom part here, but that's not to be worried about. It'll be fine. The next thing I'm going to do is come in with my little piece of vellum. This is 2 and 3 eighths by 3 inches, and vellum works really good with glue dots, so that's what I've chosen to use to adhere my vellum cardstock panel. I'm just going to put a bunch of little glue dots around here to keep that in place. And then I'm going to set it right over my cat. Make sure that none of my glue dots are going to be showing through on the punched area. So if you can see that I got one right in the little curl of that tail, you don't want that to poke through the front. And there is the luminary part of our votive candle holder. Now we're going to cut on our score lines here. We're just making a typical box. I like to angle my boxes on these tabs. So I cut at an angle up to that middle score line. That helps your box go together better. If you've ever made boxes and you have those edges sticking out when you're all done, it's kind of can make you a little crazy. Again, what the crazy, right? I don't need any help being crazy. 
And this last one. Our paper snips are great for cutting right up to the line because they have those real pointy tips rather than a bigger pair of scissors like these, for example, when you cut up to a certain line, they kind of tear the end of it because they're too thick. So these paper snips are only $10. They're amazing. They will stab you and you will bleed, so you need to be careful with them. I guess that's a good quality in a pair of scissors, right? But you do want to be careful with them because I have had... Uh, some need for band-aids from time to time when I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. Or something slips. That's usually the way it goes. Something slips. So we're just going to burnish the rest of those edges. And then here is something I learned. Once you make a lot of boxes, some people really hate making boxes. And I think the reason why they hate making them is because they try to stand them up like this and get them all perfectly squared up and straight as they're adhering them together. Well, if you've made a lot of boxes in your time, like I have, you know that you can just leave the box, lay on your tabletop, and simply close it like this. Ta-da! There's your fabulous tip for the day. Okay, remember this part right here that was cut out from that cat? We're just going to glue that together. We're going to tuck that one under. And here we go. You're never going to see that. Make sure your box is squared up nice. I'm going to put my hand in from the bottom here and make sure that my glue is sticking. There we go. I want to make sure that stays square. Okay, so here's our little luminary. And then for a few decorations, I've got a piece of our gorgeous striped ribbon. This is 7 8 inches wide, and it has wire in the edges. Love, love, love this black and white ribbon. Brand new in the Holiday Mini Catalog. I've got an 11-inch piece of ribbon here. And because it has the wire in it, I can press it over and it's going to stay like that. So that's kind of how I put my ribbon all the way around the top of my luminary. I kind of pinch it on the edge, then take it off and make sure it's straight and pinch it down good. That's going to give you the best look. And again, I'm pinching. You want to make sure you're keeping it snug too so that it doesn't buckle. I am going to put some adhesive under there to keep my ribbon in place. Okay, there we go. And I think you can use Fast Fuse or you can use some snail adhesive. And I'm just going to use my snail here. because I want my ribbon not to be buckling out. I want it to be nice and snug around my luminary holder. And here we go. See, and that keeps that in there so it's not buckling out. I really like that a lot. Just a little extra to keep things in place where they belong. And I've got this just a little bit long here, so I am going to take some old scissors. Please do not use your good scissors to cut this ribbon. It's got the rib or um, the wire in the edges, and you will ruin them. So don't do that. Use some old scissors, like the kind you buy at the dollar store. Or I have these old Stampin' Up! scissors that we used to use for cutting um, rubber. We, you can also use them to cut wire and all kinds of stuff. They're really sturdy, but we don't sell them anymore, so I apologize for that, but they work great. Then I thought I needed just a, a couple more things. I've got our mini sequin trim here in black, and I am just going to cut off a little piece of that, and then this beautiful lemon lime twist ombre ribbon. This is, I think, a quarter inch, yep, quarter inch ribbon, and I'm going to tie this around here. in a bow. 
I wish I had somebody here to hold that for me. It's kind of tricky with a box. I can get a hold of the ribbon. That's half the problem, right? Oh, I think I almost have it. There we go. And then I did not forget about the sequin trim. Let me straighten this out first. We're gonna get that right in the middle. Isn't that a cute little accent? I took the sequin trim and I just popped it right under my ribbon like this. So it's kind of like a shawl. <laughs> so your ribbon has a shawl. Your little bow has a shawl. And that'll stay in place because let's face it, we're not doing a lot with these luminaries. Here we go. We're going to turn on our little luminary and drop it right in there. And this will be a cute little accent for your Halloween decorations or a great gift to give to a coworker. They can set it on their desk. That's a cute idea. You could do these for just about any holiday or event. Or if you have a cat lady friend, you can give it to somebody that's not Halloween based. And, uh, what a cute little gift with just a little bit of effort. Thanks so much for watching my video today. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd love to earn your business. You can pop me an email at kelly at a stamp above.com and I'd be happy to send you our current catalogs. Check out my blog. I've got a lot of great Halloween projects on there using the spooky cat bundle. It is the funnest. I've had such a blast with it. These little treat holders, I just posted a video um, last Friday on how to make some little holders for these treat tubes. So those are super fun. We have some black crochet trim. That's beautiful. All kinds of great treat ideas and you can make some really, really fun cards. We have buy three, get one free. Don't forget, we have buy three, get one free on our designer series paper until the end of October. That promotion is also listed on my blog. So make sure you go check that out. So isn't this a great little combination? I absolutely love it. This is gonna go to my coworker. I think she will find this just so charming. Make sure you're clicking down here in the bottom corner to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hope you guys all have a great Thursday. Bye-bye.